Because we're doing a raster overlay type analysis, we're going to need to convert our vector-based data, our vector-based soils here, to a raster type data set. So to do that, I'm going to use the conversion tools in the ARC toolbox, and I'm going to navigate to two raster. So I'm going to go from polygon to raster. So I'm just going to drag and drop this tool right after my MP soils output. So I'm just going to drag and drop it over here. I'm going to kind of pan this over to the right a little bit and then move the tool so that it's close to my MP soils. And then I'm going to use the connection tool and connect MP soils to polygon to raster tool as an input feature. I'm going to go back to my select tool. I'm going to right click on my polygon to raster and choose open and then at the top that's my input that I connected my value field now here this is where I can specify exactly what I want my model builder or ArcGIS to make into a raster and of course we want that depth to restrictive layer lithic bedrock and then for the output, we need to specify what we want it to be saved as. So we're going to save it as depth. And I pressed the wrong button again. I apologize for that. We're going to specify depth to restrictive layer underscore L, lithic bedrock. Cell assignment. And we're going to choose Cell Center, which is the default. If you're not sure what some of these options mean, you can just click in here and then go to Show Help. And there's an explanation. Priority field, we're going to leave that at default. Cell size, we're going to choose a little bit smaller resolution. I mean, we realize that our aerial and our topography is probably not going to have this resolution that we're going to specify. But we know that we also have to incorporate a building envelope, so we'll clip off some of that edge so we won't have to worry about some of those jagged edges and some data being made up. So basically we're saying that our edges are not going to matter in this case. So I'm just going to type a 1 in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then we notice immediately that our output has changed. We can see from the little pop-up there where it's going, what it's being saved as. The polygon raster, same thing. Before we run the polygon to raster tool, I do want to re-emphasize a concept called resolution. The aerial and surface data have much larger cell size. This will cause the soils to have higher resolution or more information for every 6 foot by 6 foot cell size compared to the aerial and the surface data, and this is because we chose that cell size of 1. This will not be an issue for us because we will be creating a building envelope so our edges won't be jagged. However, if this was an issue, you would choose the larger cell size to avoid data from being made up to fill in information where there is none. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on the Polygon to Raster tool and select Run. I'm going to click Close when it's done. I'm going to right click on this and choose Add to Display and it should add it to the display and right now it's underneath the vector based one so I'm going to drag and drop it on top and right now it's using a different symbology so I'm going to right click on it and go to properties and I'm going to change it so that it matches my symbology of the other one And then over here where it says label, I'm probably going to want this to be more descriptive since I no longer have kind of an attribute table with all that nice information in it anymore. So I know this is referring to 127 centimeters. So it's 127 centimeters to lithic bedrock. And over here, I'm going to add centimeters again to lithic bedrock. And then this count information is telling us how many cells are classified as having a 127 centimeter to lithic bedrock depth. So it looks like about 755044. 
That's how many cells. This information here is actually kind of useful, especially if the developer wants to know, like, well, what percent of my land is undevelopable or is going to have this lithic bedrock issue. And here you can quickly run some calculations. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply and click OK. So what I've done thus far is I've met that one sub-objective that talks about subsurface conditions capable of supporting an amphitheater. And that's this row of tools. So I'm going to go ahead and save my model and save my ArcMap document before I start the next data extraction.